hello and happy horatober so i have something really special planned for the next few days on my blog leading up right until halloween night um i asked some of my favorite writers and some of my friends if they would like to do a short reading for the channel um and thankfully because they're all super amazing people even though they're all incredibly busy they all said yes and i've got some amazing stories for you to be able to listen to today's is um, a reading from a very talented writer uh, one of Maine's three most talented writers in my opinion and that is Joshua Marcella and Joshua is a really good friend of mine anyway but he is just such a good writer for, uh, considering that Scratches is his debut novel so he is going to read a little bit of Scratches for you a really interesting and integral chapter but that doesn't give too much away if for whatever reason you haven't already read Scratches, then please, if you can, after you listen to him, go on and buy it. And if you have bought it and read it, but for whatever reason haven't left a review, please go ahead and do that because you have no idea how important reviews are to writers. It helps with the algorithms and all that kind of stuff, gets people noticed. So anything like that will be really, really important to all of the writers that I feature on this channel. Okay, so without further ado, listen to Joshua's story. Thank you. Hello, my name is Joshua Marcella, and I am the self-published author of the horror novella Scratches that came out back in May of this year. Um, I was asked by Janine Pipe to do a short reading uh, from my book, and or she said I could read anything, but I chose to do this. Um, if you'd like, this is a, I want to pause the video, you can read the brief synopsis on the back. Uh, so you have an idea of what you're getting into here, and I will um, go ahead and read chapter 10. It's pretty quick. <clears throat> On his bike ride home from the comic book shop, Connor decided to make a pit stop at the cemetery. Thomas Hill was the oldest cemetery in town with a few headstones dating back to the late 19th century. Those could be found in the back, were old and decrepit with indecipherable engravings, fringed with moss. The front half were the more recent additions, he pedaled toward the back of the lot, reading random names, taking note of the dates as he slowly coasted by. He was always a little bewildered when he saw a smaller grave that belonged to a baby or a child. Childhood wasn't supposed to end in death. Death was reserved for old people. The image of a tiny baby lying in a coffin underground flashed into his mind and made him feel heartbroken and disillusioned. Their once soft pink skin smelling of lotion and powder slowly turned to shades of gray and purple. The worms and beetles busily ate away at the decaying wooden coffin, eager to get inside for a tasty meal. The world wasn't as black and white as his young, naive mind had convinced him. It was more gray and necrotic looking. It was far bleaker and depressing. Now the image of the worm-riddled baby was securely lodged in his brain. The cemetery lawn was green with lush grass, some of the high points had started to turn yellow from the scorching July heat that burned up the ground. He turned the front wheel and headed towards the direction of his house. It wasn't his intention to stop at the grave of his grandfather, but nonetheless, he found himself applying the brakes. Now that he stood at the gravesite, he noticed just how close it was to their house, uncomfortably close, just over the rusted chain link fence. He swung his leg over the seat and laid his bike on the ground carefully set down the paper bag that contained his newly purchased comics on top of the spokes of his bike wheel. He walked over to the patch of ground in front of the headstone where the pastor and the grave diggers had gathered a few months before the ritual. He read the words engraved on the face of the granite. George C. Hanscott, August 22nd, 1935 to November 29th, 1997, served his country, rest in peace. Connor did some quick math in his head 63 years old, served his country? Connor quietly asked himself. If he was a veteran, then why wasn't he buried with the rest of the soldiers at the VA cemetery? His class in school had visited the veteran cemetery last year for a field trip in history class during a lesson on World War II. It was a beautiful place that seemed to spread out for miles and the grass never turned yellow there. They were told that if a person served in a war, they were eligible to be buried in the cemetery and the costs were covered by the VA. Connor wondered if his mother would know or if he even dared to ask her. Something didn't add up. As he turned to hop back on his bike, something caught his eye. He kneeled down to get a closer look. 
at the bottom of the headstones, he saw four light scratches gouged into the granite below the word peace he hadn't noticed at first. He rubbed his fingers across it, curiously wondering who would desecrate the headstone of a soldier. He supposed it could have happened accidentally during the burial, or perhaps an overly careless caretaker bumped into it with a lawnmower. Then he noticed something that chilled his bones. There were footprints in the soft ground that appeared to walk away from the gravesite in the direction of the house. He grabbed his comics, hopped back onto his bike to finish the, ro the ride home, but remained there for a moment. He stared at the final resting place of, place of his grandfather. So many questions swirled aimlessly around in his head, but he didn't know if he would ever get the answers to them. His mother seemed determined to never speak about her father again, and Connor felt obliged to respect that. That was uh, about halfway through the book, uh, Scratches. And if you enjoyed what you heard and want to check it out, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, it's available on Amazon in paperback, uh, Kindle, and Kindle Unlimited. And I just want to say thank you, Janine, very much for this opportunity and for all the support you give all of us indie authors. Um, and thank you very much for listening. Have a nice day.